Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Welcome back everyone, here is the latest Tazeng news. Indonesia Bali reopens to foreign tourists after pandemic. Indonesia's top holiday destination Bali reopened to foreign tourists after 18 months of pandemic hiatus. But the island is lacking one crucial ingredient, international flights. The island's Ngurarai International Airport was empty and an airport spokesman said no flights had been scheduled to land. Indonesia only confirmed the 19 eligible countries in a statement late, which include China, India, Japan, South Korea and New Zealand, and several countries from Western Europe and the Arabian Gulf. The government is keen to revive Bali's beleaguered tourism industry in response to a sharp fall in new coronavirus cases since July, when Indonesia was Asia's COVID-19 epicenter, but details about the reopening, such as visa requirements and which countries they applied to, have so far been patchy. Nine people have been killed and 11 were missing due to faults and landslide in the Philippines. A river in the Philippines mountain province swelled after tropical cyclone Kompasu struck, as footage shows from the province disaster risk reduction management office. Video posted by the group showed water levels above the 2-meter mark on flood monitoring ruler. Nine people had been killed in the Philippines and 11 were missing due to the floods and landslides caused by heavy rain from the cyclone, the National Disaster Agency said. Kompasu, with maximum sustained winds of 100 km or 62 miles per hour, had absorbed remnants of an earlier cyclone before making landfall in the Philippines evening. Nearly 1,600 people were evacuated. Five social media idol monks draw anger of Buddhists. The popularity of the two monks has rocketed in recent weeks among internet savvy ties, many of whom find traditional Buddhism outdated and inaccessible with its temple decorum and incomprehensible Sanskrit chanting. Their Friday night live streams usually attract hundreds of thousands of viewers within minutes, and their record so far is 2 million viewers at once. The Buddhist teachings aren't outdated. But the method of teaching is so outdated, you can't spread the teachings in the old way anymore because it is too constricted with the lecturing and such. It will only reach a certain group of people, the elderly people. We make our live stream like a talk show to attract people so they stay tuned. We have to make it fabulous awesome and amazing, so that people want to keep watching and listening. Buddhist teachings and teachings of every other religions are all good things. It would be a shame if these teachings are being ignored because people turn their backs on them because they are boring. If you step into the temples, you will see there are barely any people visiting. The number of people of all walks of life have dwindled and especially with the COVID-19, they are almost all gone, so we have to go online. Despite their popularity among the young people, Paiwan and Sompong have drawn criticism from the Buddhist conservatives who deemed their mirrors inappropriate. In Thailand, Buddhism is often riddled with conventions and formalities, and monks are expected to calm figures with eyes towards Dhamma and not meddle in worldly matters. Last month, the two monks were summoned by a parliamentary committee on religion to explain their online activities, and senior figures in government and civil society warned them to tone down on the jokes and inappropriate behavior. On the summon, Prapaiwan jokes, laughing became a national problem. Apart from the modern approach, fans like Ondravi Tangmeng San, 32, says the monk's effort to engage the audience by reading comments or answering questions live has made it even more accessible, unlike the existing Buddhist convention in Thailand, where communication is done through one-way preaching. Several thousand Afghan migrants leave Germany for United States. 
The sprawling U.S. air base in remote parts of Germany has become a temporary home for Afghan families, many of whom abandoned everything during the chaotic evacuation from Kabul airport, but the army is now able to fly them onwards to a new home in the United States. Uh, we pretty much are the main hub for all information to process passengers. Several thousand Afghan evacuees airlifted out of Kabul, found temporary housing at the Ramstein army base in southern western Germany, where they had to undergo coronavirus quarantine, medical checks and vaccinations against various disease before they are able to continue to the USA. Several hundred are now on their way to a new life there. The evacuees include children housed in the heated tents at the base near Kaiserlautern. The UN's Children Agency UNICEF said it has registered around 200 separated and unaccompanied children linked to more than 120,000 evacuations from Afghanistan, with some ending up in countries such as Germany and Qatar. On the base, US officials and UNICEF experts have been supporting Afghan children, sheltering there until they can be reunited with their families or moved into foster care in the United States. There are play areas, toys and bouncy castle, as well as child specialists who can help with mental issues should they be needed. Around 140 flights carrying roughly 34,000 evacuees from Afghanistan have arrived in Ramstein since the largest they've lived in U.S. history began in mid-August according to the U.S. military, making the base the biggest port of arrival in Europe. You see all the happy smiles that come through and all the children. A deadly apartment blaze in southern Taiwan killed at least 40. The death toll in a deadly apartment blaze in southern Taiwan has risen to 40, local authorities said. The fire broke out in the early hours of Thursday at the 13-story residential building in the southern Kaohsiung city. There was boom noise and then there was fire. The power lines may have been outside. These few days there have been boom sounds from the power lines. Calcium authorities told reporters via a social media chat group that at least 40 people have been killed and 60 remain hospitalized. Footage from the local television showed firefighters dosing the burning building with water as rescue personnel carried out residents, many in oxygen masks, on stretchers. According to Taiwan Central News Agency, the 14-year-old building includes around 120 households on the 13 floors, at least five of which are empty, and the fire was extinguished at around 7.15 a.m. local time. Japan dissolves lower house parliament ahead of general election. Japan dissolved its parliament, setting the stage for an election at the end of the month that will pit new Prime Minister from Yukishida against unpopular opposition in a battle over who can better fix the pandemic-battered economy. Kishida enjoys reasonable public support 11 days into the job. Poll shows boding well for a goal of maintaining a lower house majority for his Liberal Democratic Party and its Kamito Party coalition partner. Voters will want to see a government with plans for decisive action to end the pandemic and rebuild the economy. A recent Sanke newspaper poll showed that about 48% say they want the Kishida administration to work on the coronavirus and followed by the economic recovery and employment. I hereby dissolve the lower house according to Article 7 of the Japanese Constitution. Kishida's party is promoting his push for coronavirus measures, including supply oral antiviral medication this year as well as his vision on realizing a new capitalism that focuses on economic growth and redistribution of wealth. The ruling party has also called for a sharp increase in defense spending to acquire the capability to destroy ballistic missiles amid China's increasingly assertive posture over Taiwan. Convincing in many districts is already underway, but formally the campaign will kick off on October 19. Followed by the vote on October 31, Kishida is expected to hold a news conference Thursday night. Afghan evacuees children in South Korea and welcome new life. For one young Afghan girl, her new home in South Korea has already brought simple freedoms she will otherwise be denied. In Afghanistan, you can't do activities as freely as men do, and it's satisfying to do taekwondo without the hijab in Korea right now. Most of my experience in living in Afghanistan so far has been war, and when I listened to the history I heard from my parents, I only heard about war. Now, life is in Korea stable, and I am enjoying life. 
but uh, nearly 400 Afghan evacuees who arrived in South Korea in August under a special program that aims to grant long-term residency to Afghans and their families who provide special service to South Korea in Afghanistan. Person in the future in our country. Along with other evacuees who spoke to reporters, the girl was not identified by age or name under an agreement with South Korean government officials. The Ministry of Justice said it was giving the Afghans Korean language classes as part of a social integration program and all had received alien registration cards. Squid Games of the Netflix comes to life in Abu Dhabi. Netflix Squid Game came to life in Abu Dhabi's Korean Cultural Center in a series of games inspired by the hit show Excluding Violence. Only 30 participants were selected to compete out of the 700 who applied for the event, and the contestants were selected randomly. Uh, it's me, Yusuf Trishin. My name is Yusef Trishin. I came today to play the Squid Game that was inspired by the TV show Squid Game, and hopefully I will win. Interest in Korean culture grew, according to the KCC director Chan Woo Nam, after the Netflix series was released. Before Squid Game, some Korean fans were interested in the Korean Cultural Center activities, but after it, a huge interest has rushed to our events. It is beautiful how this show could get such popularity in such a short time since its release, and the majority of people want to learn Korean language, they want to visit Korea or play the Squid Game itself. We organize the events today. Usually I have bad luck, but today I'm very happy and I hope I win. Experience and learn about our culture. Uh, more than uh... The KCC's PR manager, Ewa Kim, said this event was meant to introduce people to Korean games, the ones they usually played as children as part of their plan to familiarize people with Korean culture. Uh, people for this event. The event included around five games from the popular series, including Red Light, Green Light, a more simple version of the Glass Bridge, the Honeycomb Challenge, Marvel's Challenge, and Jackie Descartes' Flipping Game. In the show, 456 depth saddled contestants are mysteriously brought together on an island off the South Korean peninsula to compete in children's games for a huge cash prize with literally life and death consequences. And thank you for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a lovely day ahead.